All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. All right, so we are getting closer and closer to Christmas. And again, I hope you guys can appreciate my decorations. I'm kind of limited on what I can do, especially being in a barracks room, but hopefully you guys can appreciate it somewhat. I was trying to think of like ways to maybe move the elf on a shelf, dude, like somewhere around, like just move him around the background with different stuff. But again, I don't really have too many props for him. So he's just going to be chilling up there for the next few videos. So again, hope you guys can appreciate that. Now you can probably also tell I'm trying to grow a mustache and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I can't, I can't grow a mustache and I know for a fact I can't. Yeah. Cause I know it's definitely struggling and yeah, it's going to look pretty rough for the next few videos, but yeah, just bear with me. I'm going to try and grow it out and see if it can actually turn into a mustache at some point. See if I actually did hit puberty or not. But today's video, we're talking about the Marine Corps ITX rotation, or some people might hear it referred to as CACs. Now, if you're from the UK, you might also refer to this as like, what is it? Green green dagger or something. I'm not exactly sure, but I know the Royal Marines go to the same training that we do sometimes. I don't know if they have to do it for specific missions, if they're going out on specific deployments, if they have to do it, but yeah, sometimes we'll host them and they'll go over to that training. So if you're not familiar with the Marine Corps ITX, it's the integrated training exercise or the uh, combined arms exercise. So ITX or CACs. So basically what it is, it's a month long pre-deployment training that you'll go to just to sort of like validate the unit. Now, I did a video previously on the Army's JRTC and it's very similar to that as far as just being a month long, just to test certain skills and see how the entire unit operates for specific missions. Now, the Army also has like NTC, which is a little bit closer as far as the environment for what you actually do in the Marine Corps ITX, but we're gonna be talking about it. I'm not gonna get too in depth as to you know, my nuanced experience, because um, I've only gone to one ITX. I went back in 2015, but yeah, it's it's definitely enough to to do a little story time video about it, because it, yeah, it was, it was pretty exciting for me, mainly because, you know, I was going to California. That was my first time going to California. And it was also the first time that I was able to see like actual mountains in the background, because I grew up in like New York and New Jersey where you don't really have that. You just have a bunch of like skyscrapers. So it was really cool. The sunsets were really awesome. So I think I think I enjoyed California more than I really enjoyed the training is basically what I'm trying to say. But again, you have like certain stages you have to meet whenever you actually go to this training. You will do training beforehand to prepare you for this just to make sure that you actually know what you're doing. But basically when you get there, you do a platoon exercise, you do a company exercise, and then you do a battalion exercise. So the platoon exercise is basically just a platoon assaulting three trenches. So it's like one squad per trench. The company exercise is like a long distance movement. And then you go into like a big scale attack with mortars and engineers and stuff. And then you do a counter attack. And then the battalion level is basically mechanized, but then you go into like a battalion defense where you're actually, you know, digging holes and whatnot, digging your fighting positions, which I got to say, it doesn't work too well in the desert, but yeah, you're digging your fighting positions and then you're just expending a bunch of ammo. So it's a ton of fun. I will say that if you are in the Marine Corps or if you're joining the Marine Corps, especially if you're going to the infantry, you're probably going to experience ITX at some point. And I'll just say it's a lot of fun but don't expect it to be a bunch of action. Cause again, it is a month long, but the actual training, you know, like the actual ranges, they're only about three or four days out of the month. Of course, you need to do a lot of preparation, a lot of unpacking, a lot of packing, and a lot of planning during this specific month long exercise. Now, again, I know we do host other countries in the ITX. So if y'all are from a different country, whether it be the United Kingdom or whatever, let me know if you've been to ITX or if you've been to 29 Palms for training, cause that's where it's held. It's in 29 Palms, California. So if you guys have been there and did similar training or did the exact same training, let me know how it was. Cause uh, I'd like to see how it compares with your training exercises. I'm sure for other countries, if you're doing a deployment, if you're going to like Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever, I'm sure you have to do some sort of like validation or certification to make sure that your unit can actually deploy. So let me know how that is in the comments section. If you have like specific training events, put that down below. I've checked out a bunch of like finished exercises and training events, but I've not seen like specific month long exercises for like pre-deployment training. Okay, so moving into the rundown of, of the ITX, it is in 29 Palms, California. Now, a lot of people will say a lot of bad things about this place. And 
I mean, I couldn't really get a, an opinion of it just because I was only there for that training. So basically what you do, your unit, you know, picks up and moves to California. Uh, if you're in California, it's very convenient. If you're not in California, it's a pain in the butt. So for us in, cause I was on uh, the East Coast, cause I was in 1st Battalion, 8th Marines. So the 2nd Marine Division is on the East Coast and then the 1st Marine Division is on the West Coast. So we were basically moving from the East Coast to the West Coast for this training. So we took planes um, and then we flew out there and it was kind of weird, it was kind of a pain in the butt. We got there super late. Uh, we had to unpack all of our stuff so we have all these like commercial trucks coming in that were moving all of our equipment and they staged there we had to unload all the trucks again it was like midnight at this point and we're just super tired we're super done it's a rough introduction but if you're doing any sort of month-long training like this it's going to be rough logistics wise so we unpacked all of our stuff we got assigned our hooches which is basically like where you sleep um, it's kind of just picture like a, a pepsi can or just like a normal tin can and then just like dig it halfway into the ground. It's basically just like half of a can sticking out of the ground. So I'll put a picture up right here. And that's basically what it is. It's really not accommodating. It's not meant for much. Um, I don't know if it had heat and air conditioning. I don't remember that. I don't think it did. Cause I remember we were super miserable because during the day it would be really, really hot. And then at night it would be really, really cold. So some of them have some level of insulation, but it doesn't really help. So overall it's pretty miserable. Now you also have about 20 people in that little tin can. Actually, no, it's about 30 people. So you have about 15 people on, on each side. And again, it's just really close. You have these cots, which of course are not gonna be that comfortable, but it is what it is. It's only a month. It's not like you're doing that for an entire deployment. So you have like your, your bags underneath your cot or on the side. So there's not really a whole lot of like room to do anything. Sometimes people will get like a case of MREs and set that out as a table so you can do card games and whatnot. But you didn't really hang out in there too much, I gotta say. Um, some people did just lay on their racks or read books. Like that's really the only thing that you were able to do. For me, I had a little like pocket constitution and I was just reading that because again, it's, it's a lot of downtime when you're there. It is a month long and when you're not planning or doing the actual like three or four days of the exercise then it's going to be pretty boring so for me i was a squad leader so i was a corporal at the time and i was um, doing squad leader duty so it was kind of new for me and it was kind of cool to see all the planning that went into all this stuff it was cool but you know it was also kind of a pain in the butt um, but i had a lot of fun doing it it kept me out of that that squad bay at least um, but again, overall, it wasn't too bad. We had a lot of downtime. Planning wasn't too bad. The service was terrible. Like if you had a, a cell phone, you were able to keep it in the hooches, but it just, it didn't work. Um, the service didn't work. You had to walk like half a mile to get service. Wasn't a big deal. Again, you can probably suck it up for a month, read a book or something. So overall, the living accommodations weren't too great but you could definitely manage. And I gotta say the schedule was the schedule was not too bad. Again, you did have this downtime and there was a gym actually like on the little camp, I think it was called Camp Wilson, but you have like the, the gym there, which is always, always crowded. You might be able to catch it at a good time, but you just have like, I don't know, maybe like a battalion or two battalions of Marines for this one small gym. So of course it's going to get raided a lot. Um, so we did a lot of running, we did a lot of lifting. So that was kind of fun. It was just cool being in the desert and, and lifting. Again, like the whole like ambiance of everything was really cool having like the mountains, the awesome sunsets, sunrises. Um, at night you would hear like all the coyotes and stuff and it was just a new experience. So it was kind of exciting for me just being in a new environment like that. So about a week passes, uh, you're all settled in and now you start moving from the planning to the rehearsals. So again, I was a squad leader, so I would just go out there with my team leaders and my teams and we just, you know, conduct rehearsals. So we knew we had a platoon attack coming up and we had some trenches to take. So we would practice, you know, grenade throwing. We'd practice bounding up to that trench, making sure that people could could fire and move and, and cover each other appropriately. So we, didn't, we were doing rehearsals like that. 
Um, you don't really do rehearsals for the company exercise just because the individual person or the individual squads don't have such a specific mission like you do with the platoon exercises. So it was fun. Like we would do, you know, frag drills and whatnot. And I'll post like some clips periodically throughout this video. Everybody is frag. Clip, clip, twist, pull, pitch. Frag out. We just barely went over. But I really enjoy just having the responsibility of being a squad leader. So then you move to the first exercise, which is a platoon attack. So this was called Range 410 Alpha. And there's a bunch of videos online. So if you guys want to look up Range 410 Alpha, it's basically just, it's the same thing. It's a bunch of Marines just attacking these trenches. So there was like three trenches. Um, I think you only have to take down like two of them. So you go in, you take the first one. My squad had the second trench. So they're sort of like offset. So you have like one trench here, the second trench here, and then the third trench like all the way in the back. So the first squad took down this first trench and then we basically moved behind them and skirted around that trench and then took this trench. So it was really fun because it's just cool moving through all this like rocky, sandy terrain, like what you'd see in like Iraq and Afghanistan. So it was cool moving through that sort of terrain because we're used to like running through the woods, running through swamps and everything. Um, so it just, it looked cool, it felt very cool. And then we have these trenches, which basically you just need to keep bounding up and keep, keep fire on the trenches. And then as the trenches were taken, you would use the, the other trenches to fire on the trenches that you haven't taken yet. So it was really fun. You move up to the trench, you throw an actual grenade in there, like an actual frag grenade, not even a trainer. So that was really exciting. You don't really get to use frag grenades so much with actual training. So that was cool. And then we take the trench. It was like really, really tall for some reason. So. I had my uh, my M27, my automatic rifleman. I had him, but he had to step on an assault pack to be able to actually see out of the trench because it was so tall. So that was kind of funny to see. Um, but yeah, then you're just suppressing that. Um, Cause I was a squad leader. I'm basically standing up a lot, trying to figure out what's going on. I ended up getting like notionally headshot. So it is what it is, it does happen. Um, but that was basically it. It's a pretty easy exercise. You do it a bunch of times before you actually get to ITX. Now the next one was range 400 and this one is pretty iconic. So this is a company level exercise. So you have three platoons and then you also have engineers attack. And the engineers are pretty cool because they have, um, they have something called an APOB, which is anti-personnel obstacle breaching or breacher tool or something. So you have this APOB and basically what it is, it's like a backpack, but they set it up and it shoots like a long string of grenades basically. So if you have like a really thick obstacle and you're just trying to make a lane through that obstacle, you would shoot this thing, it would have like a rocket and then attached to that rocket you'd have like a string and then periodically on that string you'd have like little grenades. which is really cool. So that was my first time seeing that. We saw the engineers use it, it was super loud, but then once they actually got through that obstacle, we were able to, to feed our entire company through. Now it's pretty cool, because again, you do have a movement up to that obstacle, so you're just hiking a lot, and then you, you really have to you know switch your brain and get into the mindset of doing an attack. So the entire company shuffles through, you get online, we're sort of like on like this elevation and we're shooting down into this open field where you have like targets set up you have like stacks of tires as like machine gun bunkers and it was just awesome because we had our mortarmen just dropping all these rounds you know we had these these riflemen right next to the mortarmen just suppressing everything and then the mortarmen were actually shooting white phosphorus rounds so you had the white phosphorus hitting these tire stacks because they were like machine gun bunkers but what was really cool is our 240 gunners, our medium machine guns, were firing on these tire stacks that got hit by white phosphorus. And the tracers were, you know, like igniting and you have all these tire stacks just in the distance, like completely ablaze. So it was really cool. It was cool to just have a company 
firing on this one objective. You don't really get to do that too much, especially with your home units. Um, that's usually for like a validation kind of thing. It's just getting all the platoons together. And again, you don't really, like you'll talk crap about other platoons, but when you're actually doing everything together, it just goes really well and it's just it just feels super badass. So yeah, range 400 is very, very iconic. Again, you can find a bunch of videos online um, I wasn't allowed to actually use my GoPro for range 400 or range 410. So I was kind of butthurt about that, but it is what it is. Next, we're moving into the battalion exercise, which is the last exercise. And again, this was more mechanized than anything. So I think they called it the MAC, like mechanized assault course or something. But basically for us, what it meant for my squad is we're just going to be sitting in the back of an AAV with our machine gunners and just chilling because this was also a validation of the AAVs and those crewmen to assault together. And we also had tanks and stuff. So it was pretty badass. We had tanks, we had tow gunners, we had AAVs, and they're basically assaulting through this like mountainous desert terrain, this wide open desert. So it was really badass. Um, yeah. So the range was pointless. Mm -hmm. Why it was even filmed on your GoPro is beyond me because you have I eight have hours. I have this huge ass fucking tear in my fucking crotch. We're out here in the desert. We're starving. Um, it wasn't so badass for us, I gotta say. In the back of the AAVs, it's pretty miserable. You don't have a lot of room. It's extremely uncomfortable. We had to wear our kit the entire time, which you know it is what it is. But when you're sitting down in the AAV. It just hurts your back and you just get super, super uncomfortable. And then we also ended up running out of food. So no one thought to like give us a box of MREs in the back of this AAV. So we were in the back of that AAV for 13 hours, like just 13 hours straight, no food. It was just miserable. And I have a picture, you guys might've seen it, but I'll post it right here. But yeah, it's just us in the back of this AAV and you can see I do not look very happy. So it was just, it was pretty miserable, I gotta say. Now, something I do remember when I was actually at ITX is we're in the back of these AAVs. It's like 11 hours in, so we're miserable. Like, uh, it's nighttime at this point. So we open the hatches and we're just like looking outside because we're not really doing too much. And then there was like a test, a test launch of like an ICBM. Um, I think the Navy was doing it. And we saw it and we're just like, we thought it was like a UFO or something because we'd never seen like a rocket booster or like a missile like that. Um, so it was really bizarre. And that was like one of my most vi vivid memories from ITX is us just being super miserable, standing up out of this AAV and seeing this missile just go across the sky. Um, so I can probably pull up pictures because it was a bunch of people that thought it was a UFO because it wasn't really announced too well. So I'll probably, if I can find a picture, I'll post it here. If not, then you guys can look it up. But yeah, it was it was really cool to see. And then later that night, we just stopped at, at, at some point and they're like, all right, just start digging fighting positions. And we're like, all right, I mean, we don't have any food or, or like water and we're super tired, but okay, we'll do it. But the sand was super, super loose. So we're trying to dig and it wasn't working. So we had to call up the engineers with their like actual vehicles to dig us these positions. And then we just chill in the positions until it's like daytime or something. I think we, we went to sleep at that point. Um, but then we wake up and then you have like the whole battalion defense. So you have the, the AAVs with their 50 cals and their Mark 19s. You have the AAVs engaging. You have the tow, the tow guns or the tow missiles going off. And then you also have the tanks doing their stuff. And we also had like gunships coming in. So it was really badass to see. I, I'm gonna see I put a... For us, there wasn't a whole lot of emphasis. We had a couple of pop-up targets that we could engage, but it was really for everybody else, really for like the crewmen and stuff. But that was really fun. I have a specific video just on that because I did bring my GoPro for that. And it's basically just us inside this crappy fighting position, just shooting at pop-up targets. <laughs> It was, it was so badass. And I gotta say, 
infantrymen are very proud of, of being infantrymen and being grunts and we usually like talk smack about these other like pogues so like the the tanks or the aav crewmen or whatever but it was really badass seeing them put their weapons to work especially the aav is engaging with like the mark 19s and the 50 cals you had the tow missiles going and then again you did have the the gunship so it was super cool to see uh it's not something you get to see a whole lot but yeah, 29 Palms is a huge training area. So you have a lot of like maneuver room and a lot of space to use these weapons that you might not normally have access to. Uh, but yeah, again, those vehicle targets were way out there. So we were just focused on the pop-ups. It was very, very easy for us. We had our machine gunners on our left. And yeah, it was just, it was super cool. And then, yeah, we finished that up, got in the AVs and went back. I mean, I don't know, we were in the AVs for like 13 hours, but it didn't take much longer to actually get back. I think it took about an hour. So I don't know what, what happened in that span of 13 hours. Sometimes we'd stop for hours and then keep going. And uh, yeah, we, it was kind of confusing for us. We didn't really get a whole lot of word on, on what was going on. But yeah, that's basically it. That's all you have to do. Just those three exercises. Again, if you're in a leadership position, you're gonna be doing a whole lot of planning. So for me, and the other squad leaders, we were there with the platoon sergeant and the company commanders and stuff, and just doing all this like sand tables. So we'd have like a terrain model made to actually show the, the layout of the terrain and all the objectives and stuff, and we'd just do planning like that. But yeah, overall, it's really not too complicated. You do get a bunch of downtime, and you guys will see. If the, I, I would say like 25 to 30% of the weird stuff you see online of Marines doing, like that's probably at ITX. It's, I don't know, I don't know what happens. I think people just get stir crazy, but a lot of funny stuff happens there. Uh, I ended up making like a little pumpkin or something. We started carving a pumpkin out. Um, yeah, I don't know. We had a, a really big brawl at some point and the first sergeant came in and got really upset at us. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens, so. If you're going to ITX or CAX, that's probably going to happen. And it's 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 fun. It really makes you feel like an infantryman. But once everything is done, you have like this warrior's feast. So we had like a couple of kegs get brought in and we were able to have like two beers each, which it was like the worst beer ever, but it was just awesome to have that. And even like the 18 year olds were allowed to drink beer, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, we had some people who you know took other people's beer and got like really really trashed so that does happen as well but overall that's basically it once you have that warrior's feast you do all the preparation to leave and then you head back to wherever you came from so for us we were heading back to the east coast and yeah i mean it, it went by relatively quickly but again you have so much downtime you need to do other stuff you need to get a book you need to do more PT, you need to hit at the gym. So it kind of forces you into this like deployment routine almost. But yeah, it was it was cool. I did have fun. Again, if you guys are going to it, you're going to have fun. Um, if you're joining the Marine Corps, definitely look forward to that, especially if you're joining the Marine Corps Infantry. And again, if you're, if you're from a different country and you actually went to 29 Palms for training, let me know how that was. I'd love to hear what like a foreigner would think of 29 Palms because I mean, a lot of people in the US hate it, so I think it would be much worse for someone, especially someone in the UK going to 29 Palms. I feel like it would just be a complete change of scenery, but I guess that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if you're getting rained on all the time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I did talk about the Army's GRTC, so if you wanna hear about the Army's month-long pre-deployment training, you can go check out that video. Um, but yeah, ITX is basically the same thing. It's the Marine Corps equivalent to their pre-deployment training. And that's basically it. It's nothing too crazy. A lot of fun, a lot of good memories. Uh, you'll definitely have some pretty solid memories. Um, even if you serve only like four years, some of the best memories you have are going to be just from that one month. Um, so that's pretty much all I can say about that. But yeah, if you guys want to hear any specific story time style videos, on anything I might have mentioned from my career. By all means, recommend, recommend that down in the comments section. Now, I know a lot of y'all have been requesting like a day in the life sort of thing, but it's, it, it's I'm telling you right now, it's going to be boring, especially here in Korea. And then with all this COVID going on, we're not really that busy. Uh, we do get to do some like marksmanship training every now and again, like qualifications and whatnot. 
But other than that, it's pretty much just like classes on a whiteboard. And you guys really wouldn't want to see that. I might wait till I get back to the US to do a day in the life. But right now, yeah, it wouldn't be that entertaining. But yeah, just recommend anything you want down in the comments section. As long as it pertains to the military or something that I can generally relate to or something that's just badass, I'm down to check it out. And again, I love doing these story time style videos because I can sort of like remember all the crazy stuff, especially ITX. There was a lot of crazy stuff that, that happens. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you went to CAX, if you went to ITX and you have any crazy memories, definitely put those down in the comment section. If you have any cool videos from ITX, I'd love to see those as well. Because again, some crazy stuff happens there. But yeah, I do hope you guys enjoy the video. Keep the recommendations coming. Keep liking and commenting and subscribing. I do appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. That is it for this one. So I will see you all in the next one.